first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparation for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of heaven. And then, after singing a hymn, they went off to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Know 
that this is the real presence of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. I asked a couple people how they came to know and to love the Eucharist in our parish. And let me ask you before I share what they shared. Do you love the Eucharist? Yes. yes. Show me. Show me that you love it. I asked that question to myself too. Am I there when I can get there? And to come before the Eucharist. One of our parishioners shares, I believe I came to know and love the Eucharist through many avenues. The grace of the Holy Spirit working through others. The angels that protect us. The power of prayer. And our holy blessed mother. From the beginning of my life, I was brought to Mass, received the sacraments, prayed the rosary, and was taught in Catholic grade schools. All these helped to form me in my faith life. I strayed away from that faith many times in early adulthood, but I come back. The power that was in the sacraments totally surrounded me, never allowing me to drift completely away. It would overwhelm me, and I could feel the love that was there that was like no other love in my life. I wasn't completely surrendered until I heard preaching about Jesus and letting He be the one you're looking for. Letting Him fill that hole in your heart. Hole in the heart. That was the clincher. The Holy Spirit worked and I was completely consumed with searching for a stronger relationship with Jesus. I read every book I could get my hands on, including, and most importantly, the Bible. I joined prayer groups. I prayed. I went on retreats. I went on six youth trips. I started going to adoration once or twice a week for hours. I started going to daily mass. I'd arrive 30 to 45 minutes early to pray in the quiet of the church and stay late. I went to confession regularly. My eyes were open. The scales were falling off. The love of the Lord that He had always been showering on me was becoming so abundantly clear. He never left me when I had turned my back on Him. The people he sent me in my life to keep me from straying too far became apparent. The little miracles that continued to happen all the time. The harder I searched, the more I could see him working. Guilt consumed me many times for the stupid and sinful life that I had lived over the years as I became aware of all these graces and how blind I had been. Through, the, through daily Mass, continued receiving of the Eucharist, gradually that has stopped. His abundant mercy, His mercy is abundant, and everyone needs to know this. Do you love the Eucharist? Show me. Another Christian. Really, it happened over time, just to know and to love the Eucharist, and it just isn't one thing. I just know that the move, the move that I went to Mass, the move I wanted to be there, if I was going to go put down things that help me, they'd be the power of the Holy Spirit, reconciliation, and time. In prayer, in thinking, and in reading. First of all, the power of the Holy Spirit. It was a starting point for me. The Holy Spirit helped me in a way that I hadn't been able to, gave me a glimpse of His power. I started listening to the prayers of Mass. Really listening. The one where you put your hands over the bread and wine and pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to change into the body and blood of Jesus. My thought and prayer at that moment became that if the Holy Spirit can do that, He can change me too. Over time I can see I was being changed and I wasn't the one doing it. Water added into the wine. Water represents our lives. It's a powerful image to me. So in my uh, infusion into the wine that is the Holy Spirit, I'm going to change. And then the line from the song. Jesus tells us, when you eat my body and you drink my blood, I will live in you and you will live in my love. That song was one of the first Christian CDs that I bought. It would run through my mind in communion line. I think, I want that. I wanted Jesus living in me, receiving daily, made me more aware that I needed to be worthy of Jesus in me in that special way. Reconciliation. I've never preached on that. Experienced Jesus' mercy. It made me spend time really thinking about the cross and how Jesus suffered and died. Why? Why did he do that? The movie The Passion of the Christ had a huge impact, brought the reality of my own sin to being part of it all. Time in prayer, just learning to spend time, especially in adoration. 
reading the scriptures and books and books and books. Thinking. I like to think and reflect on how Jesus has worked in my life, loved me, even though uh, I shut him out for so long, but he took me back. Do you see the theme there? And what the parishioners are sharing? Just going all out for it and knowing and experiencing his merciful love in the Eucharist and in the sacrament of reconciliation. Those two are tied. If we love reconciliation, we're going to love the Eucharist. If that's absent, we have to question our love for either. Because they go together. We can't come here and fake it and say, well, sin doesn't matter in my life. We've got to prepare a way for the Lord in the Eucharist to receive that, what He has for us. God always taking us back, though in Jesus, embracing us in the Eucharist and in the sacrament of reconciliation. This is from Paul the Sixth, written in 1964 about the Eucharist. Bursting forth in total exuberance of Eucharistic love, the Church desires only to dispel the mysterious silence that surrounds the Eucharist and to emit a triumphant cry that bursts out through the walls of the sanctuaries and overwhelms the streets of the cities so as to infuse the whole of human community with the joy of the presence of Christ, of Him who is silent and strong companion of ours along the paths of time and of earth. This exuberant celebration of Jesus and the joy of Jesus in our hearts that goes out to the streets, to all of humanity, of humankind, and we share that. And that's what our life should be about. Who are we telling about the Eucharist? Who are we sharing that with? That this is it. This is really it. And if it's really it, then it's the greatest good news that we could ever have. So we pray for that. We ask for that. Do you love the Eucharist? Show me. We talk about it and we share it with people. Let's pray. serve you. 